27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. In our Gospel, we are told that even though Jesus was rejected and put to death, he has become the keystone of our lives. He is at the center of all that we are and all that we do. We grow late in the year. We celebrate the 27th Sunday of Ordinary Time. And we begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. With your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in my heart. And on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God. Jesus Christ. 
Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy, have mercy on us. For you are the Holy One, you Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer dare not ask. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower, and he hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crops of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when I looked for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to grazing, break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but see bloodshed, for justice, but hark the outcry. The word of the Lord.
Why have you broken down its walls so that every passerby plucks its fruit? The poor from the forest lays it waste, and the beasts of the field feed upon it. Again, oh Lord of hope, look down from heaven and see. Take care of his mind and protect what your right hand has planted. The Son of Man. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about all these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I have chosen you from the world, says the Lord, go forth and bear fruit that will remain. The 
Lord be with you. With your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time grew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again, he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? By the Lord has this been done, and it was, is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God we taken away from you, given to a people that will produce its fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know how many times I've heard that particular scripture reading, many, and I'm sure that all of you have too. And it's called the parable of the vineyard. And it's not a parable at all, it's an allegory. And it has, it's rich with with tradition that goes clear back before the Persian conquest uh, of Israel. It goes back to the whole idea of what what a vineyard is, it's the people of Israel. It's God's, God's covenant people. But I think it's maybe appropriate that we talk about that at this time in the year. It's simple, it's simple, it really is. You know, we look at this thing and we see uh, the vineyard as, as God's creation, but also God's love. If you looked at the translation of Isaiah, it says, my friend had a, had a uh, vineyard. A better translation might be my beloved in terms of who he was in relationship to his God. And he's talking about the people of Israel. He's talking about what happens when things go wrong. And this is Matthew writing to uh, a community of Gentiles and he's talking about the failure of leadership. The failure of the leaders of the Jews, to do the things that they're supposed to do. He's talking in this gospel to those scribes and Pharisees, the leaders. Now, who is everybody? We can do that pretty easily, I guess. Um, Those that that the landowner sent before them to to collect the the gross profits at the time that they were supposed to be collected were the prophets. They came to talk to the people talk to the leadership about what it was that they were supposed to be doing and they did it badly and what did they do they treated them worse so finally the tenant sends his son now we know that this is written you know post resurrection and obviously it's written with a an eye backwards matthew has taken a, a mark and story and developed it okay he's made it made it bigger and he talks about what it is that has been given to the Jews and how they've rejected it. They rejected the son with some crazy idea that the inheritance was theirs no matter what. Doesn't make any sense at all, does it? So what was Matthew doing? He was making them feel 
bad because they, they had a gift and they'd squandered the gift. That brings us to a question, I think. And the question's a simple one. In this time, you know, I'm sitting here talking to a bunch of people in, in their jammies or whatever's going on, but an empty church virtually, okay? And the question is, then the church, no offense, but it's not just this building. The church is all of us. And we don't get to gather like we used to do. The big question is, the same one that's asked to the leadership there, how are we going to continue to be church? How are we going to continue after this COVID thing slackens? Or how are we going to do it even now when it's still running rampant? What are we going to do to be church? It's certainly not just dependent on ordained ministry. Certainly not. No. There's leadership in the community. But it takes everybody being what they need to be to use the gifts that they're given to be church. Church is about being more than just attending. Church is about what goes on for a long time. Friends, we're in danger if if we depend on ordained ministry of not having enough. You know that. Um, I saw something the other day that talks about 10 or 15 years from now at the rate that we're going, we're going to be down to one or two uh, priests per county in this diocese. That's scary. But it isn't scary if we understand what we're supposed to be. That means giving to ordained ministry, people stepping up to do that. But more than that, to assume the leadership of the laity. That's us doing the things that we need to do to make church happen. This call of the leadership of the Jews to misunderstand God's gift is one that we shouldn't misunderstand. You and I are called to be church, to use the gifts that God gives us and not not shirk our responsibility. We are called to something special and we need to live as church and be special. My brothers and sisters, let us profess what we believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My friends, with confident faith and trust, let us offer our petitions to the Lord. For God's people, that Jesus will be the center of their lives, the source of our strength and our joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, that we will be mindful of the poor, the hungry, and the homeless. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our our prayer. prayer. For all who suffer because of violence or terrorism, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our our prayer. prayer. For the desire and grace to be all that God calls us to be, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our our prayer. prayer. For a greater reverence for human life in all of its forms, let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, Lord, hear our hear prayer. prayer. For Terry Bowton, Kathleen McClue, Kay Rosenberger, Mike Pittman, and all the faithful departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. And let us pray for all those for whom we've been asked to pray. O oh God, we thank you for the transforming power of your presence. May we continue to grow in your grace as we share your love with others. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Forever and ever. Amen. 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 My friends, at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, 
put on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stay in your chairs, your beds, wherever you are. There's just some quick announcements for you. Um, all parents of second graders who would like to have their child receive 
the sacraments of First Reconciliation and Holy Communion during the 2020-2021 year uh, will need to fill out the online registration forms that can be found on our St. Mary's website or by emailing Patty and return them to St. Mary's as soon as possible. The preparation sessions for these beautiful sacraments begin this month, October. Uh, something kind of special for us. Our diocese is host hosting a webinar on the topic of me mental illness and depression for youth and adults on Tuesday, October 6th from 7 to 8.15 p.m. and Wednesday, October 7th from 7 to 8.15 p.m. This webinar is designed to raise awareness of the signs of mental illness and to explore how we can, as a faith community, best respond to what we see in others. Both seminars can be found on the Diocesan Facebook website, and there is no cost for online participants. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. Stone is rolled away, and the two.